Hello, wonderful bio students, and welcome to our video on cell organelles. This is the first of two. What I first want to ask you is what do you have in common with these three things? This is a little cute, little amazing little baby porcupine. Uh, this is a really cute, cuddly looking fish, my favorite fish called the sarcastic fringe head. And this is a also actually quite beautiful but quite disruptive to your gastrointestinal tract. This is a protist called Giardia. So what do you have in common with all three of these things? Well the answer is is that you all are made out of the same type of cell. You all have what is called a eukaryotic animal cell and that is the basis of your existence. Now we know that cells have a lot of demands on them. They're required to break down things, they're required to make energy, they're required to produce everything that the body needs. Well the way that they do that is these specialized structures called organelles. So you can see that this isn't just a ball of goo, that there's actually some specific structures with specific features that help the cell carry out its functions. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the organelles and also how they vary between cells in different parts of the body. So we're going to start right here. And I know you guys all know what this is. This is the nucleus. And I know you've heard of the nucleus as the control center for the cell. Basically, it holds all the information. This is where, if there was like a boss of the cell, they would sit right here. Their office would be like super nice, and they'd have a view of the whole cell, and they would be totally in charge, like the manager. Let's take a deeper look at the nucleus. The nucleus, this is a TM microscope image of a nucleus, and we see that there's this dark concentration of material here and that dark concentration of material is called the nucleolus and the nucleolus is where our RNA let's write that out so the nucleolus is where our RNA oop, that R the little R stands for ribosomal RNA is uh, assembled and secreted in kind of like little bits and it lab later forms what we know as ribosomes. So this is a really, really, really important part of cells because we know that ribosomes also serve another very important function. The ribosomes are excreted through these little pores in the nuclear envelope, which is just a membrane that surrounds the nucleus. Now, when we look even closer, we say, okay, we've got this membrane where things are secreted. We've got our nucleolus. Well, I thought that the nucleus held the DNA. Well, this, all this gray matter, all in here and all in here, is where DNA is stored. And it's stored, let me change colors here, it's stored in what we call chromatin. Okay, so when we think of DNA, we think of this nice double helix, right? Well, actually, DNA is double helix, but it's stored within the nucleus in a much more compact manner. Just to take a quick look at it, if this is chromatin, this is inside of our nucleus, that kind of gray mushy stuff, kind of looks like a bowl of spaghetti. If we have our DNA double helix right here, we can see it twisting around itself. It actually winds itself around these proteins, small proteins and large proteins called histones and nucleosomes. And it makes this giant chromatin fiber. And the chromatin fiber is kind of what is, makes up the noodles of the spaghetti. That's different than a chromosome. A chromosome is basically when the chromatin fiber becomes really, really condensed and the cell gets ready for, um, uh, and during mitosis when the cell gets ready to divide and we're having DNA replication and all that fun stuff that you get to learn about very soon. So um, nucleus is where DNA is stored and it's stored as chromatin fiber wrapped around proteins called histones and nucleosomes. Now, we have talked about how in the nucleolus we make these things called ribosomes. And ribosomes are super important. Let's spell this out. Ri ribos 
ribosomes. And you probably remember ribosomes as the site of protein synthesis. Synthesis. Now, synthesis just means to make. So ribosomes are where proteins are made. And we know that proteins are so ridiculously important. If I could communicate to you exactly how important proteins are, then I feel like I will have done my job as a biology teacher because proteins are everything. They're what we look like. They're, what, they're how our body functions, how we digest food, how we make energy, um, everything. So ribosomes take the code that's found in our chromatin and help assemble proteins. And we're going to study this, this word protein synthesis. You'll, mean, you'll know that it's a very complex process. But let's talk a little bit more about ribosomes. Ribosomes um, can be attached to something called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now it's rough because ribosomes are on it. Much like I think of like sandpaper as like sand is attached to the paper, so rough sandpaper. So um, the endoplasmic reticulum is kind of this like folded, tubular, squishy thing with a bunch of ribosomes stuck on it. So, um, and what you need to know about ri ribosomes is that they're basically an, like an RNA and protein globule. Okay, so our bound ribosomes that are found here on the rough endoplasmic reticulum are actually exported from the cell. So any proteins that are made from ribosomes attached to the rough ER are made to, to leave the cell. Okay, um, an example of this is your pancreatic cells have a rough endoplasmic reticulum that produces a protein called insulin. Now we know that insulin helps to regulate the sugar levels in our blood. Um, and so the protein insulin is made here at the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and then it is excreted into the bloodstream where it can effectively work to control our blood sugar levels. There's also, you notice in this cell picture, these little dots everywhere. Well, these little dots are what we call free ribosomes. They have been liberated. They are free. Um, they are not attached or um, living with the constraints of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, you can see in this picture, this TEM picture, that we have all of these little dots right here. These are our free ribosomes. And the dots that are attached to this these like weird lines, these weird lines right here are the folds of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we have attached ribosomes, bound ribosomes, what we call them, and free ribosomes. Free ribosomes make proteins that just hang out inside of the cell. So the proteins that they make never leave the cell. For example, in the process of glycolysis, when we study um, cellular respiration, the free ribosomes produce enzymes that help the initial breakdown of sugars when we use them to break to make energy. So that is the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes. Let's talk next about how proteins are made and then sent. So we're still looking at the rough ER. So we're kind of zooming in on the rough ER. This right here would of course be a ribosome ribosome. And um, we know that the rough ER makes a ton of proteins. and super important. Um, but these proteins, like I said, need to be transported out of the cell. So what happens is these cute little things uh, called transport vesicles. Transport. Let's see if Ms. Ewing can spell vesicles. Ooh, that's a scary one. Vesicles. You guys can correct me on that. Um, and those like bud off. They like, you know, they kind of like grow and then they like pinch off. And they are um, these little escape pods that leave the rough ER to go wherever they need to go, whether it's leaving the cell or going to the Golgi apparatus. I kind of think of them like the escape pods on the Prometheus shuttle. Um, so you have your main shuttle where everything is produced, but if you need to get away, uh, you've got your little escape pod. 
that brings us to a super important organelle. Now this kind of looks like the rough ER, but it doesn't have ribosomes. So it's like the sandpaper without the sand. This is what we call the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now this is the one where uh, in your first biology class, you're probably like, I don't know what that does. It's the smooth ER. It's basically the rough ER without the dots on it, right? Well, actually, the smoothie art is so ridiculously important. It has so many tasks that it does, and it's very specialized. Um, one thing that it does is it, um, it produces lipids. So um, it helps produce lipids that restore membrane um, and produces phospholipids. It's really good at um, making oils, like the oils that you use in your body are all produced by the Smooth ER. Also, if you really like drugs and alcohol, you want to thank your Smooth ER because your Smooth ER is involved in the detoxification of toxic chemicals. Basically, what happens is a hydroxyl group is added to these toxins and it makes them water soluble, which makes them more able to be flushed through the bloodstream and, and leave the body. So the smoothie art basically detoxifies these chemicals. The interesting thing is, is that drugs and alcohol actually induce the spread of more smoothie art to grow. So um, as you consume more toxic chemicals that's found in drugs and alcohol, you gain more smoothie R, and therefore you increase your detoxification rates. So this is why a lot of times we develop tolerances um, to drugs, whether it be prescription drugs or whether it be, um, I guess these are called um, recreational drugs um, and alcohol, because we have to, in, basically, we have to ingest higher doses of the drug or alcohol to achieve the same effect as before. Because we have this super awesome buff smoothie R that is super good at detoxing. And we're thankful for that because if we didn't have that, um, we could have very serious issues. Um, so another thing that the smoothie R does is it... Um, it develops all of your steroids, specifically ones you're probably pretty thankful for, are your sex hormones. Oop, oop. There we go. So um, this is uh, this is a hormone. It's it's a, an oil made from an oil, and. Um, the, this is what gives us our sexual characteristics, estrogen, testosterone, our smoothie R is in charge of producing those things specifically in the glands that are involved in the endocrine system like the adrenal glands and um, your ovaries and your testes. So smoothie R is very, very important. Uh, the next thing I, I want to talk about, we've been talking a lot about how cells produce a lot of things, they make this, they make this. Well, how do these things actually get to places? Well, we have, your cells have a local FedEx. And that FedEx is uh, also known as the Golgi apparatus. Apparatus. And the Golgi apparatus kind of looks like stacks of flattened stack, sacks, it's a tongue twister. I like to think of them as a bunch of pita pockets stacked up on each other. And it's interesting is there's a receiving and shipping department on the Golgi apparatus. So if we look at the center of the Golgi apparatus, this is where items are received. This is where transport vesicles arrive. And then when things are manufactured, modified, um, ready, they actually have specific chemical groups that they place onto things like proteins and glycoproteins and glycolipids, which are kind of like zip codes that tell um, the vesicle where to actually take this molecule that was just made. So um, the receiving end is here, and it's actually shipped out on the perimeter or the periphery 
of the Golgi apparatus in these little transport vesicles. Here's a TEM image of Golgi apparatus. You can see it has that kind of distinct U shape and you can see all these, these vesicles right here are arriving and these vesicles right here are leaving. So it has kind of this action of arriving and leaving. What I want you to think about when you think about the Golgi apparatus is it's the shipping and receiving department. It also is a modifier. So it ships, receives, and modifies. And what I mean by modifies is an example is glycoproteins. So we know that glycoproteins are made in the rough ER and they come to our FedEx, right? They come to our Golgi apparatus and the Golgi apparatus actually modifies that protein, um, the, the, the sugar part of it, um, takes off different groups, carbohydrate groups, puts on different groups to make sure that it's going to work well and also work as a specific function. So that is our Golgi apparatus. In review, we have our beautiful little cell here. We've talked about the nucleus and this is the command center. This is where the boss hangs out. Um, and in the, the dark center of the nucleus is the nucleolus. This is where our RNA is produced. Basically, the, the little pieces that make ribosomes are produced there. The gooey stuff that fills this is chromatin, which is where all of our DNA is stored in these tightly coiled bundles that look kind of like spaghetti. We have this thing that kind of surrounds, notice that the ribosomes are produced here and our rough ER is really close to the nucleus so the ribosomes don't have to go far to become attached to this rough ER. And we know that the ribosomes uh, produce proteins and the ones that produce proteins on the rough ER produce the proteins that leave the cell. And then we also have these ribosomes floating around the cell that produce proteins that stay within the cell. This right here is our friend, the Golgi apparatus. It receives transport vesicles from the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and it sends things out to either leave the cell or to other parts of the cell. It also can modify those things, has the power to modify those things. And the last thing we talked about were, was basically, it kind of looks like the rough ER without the dots, but it's a little more tuby. That's a smooth ER, and that's the thing we really like if we like our uh, hormones, right? And also if we like drugs and alcohol, um, we are very thankful for our smooth ER because it helps with the detoxification process. Our livers actually have very developed, our liver cells have um, very developed and specialized smooth endoplasmic reticulum. You can actually see those cells have um, kind of like, a, it's more buff, I guess, if, if it was a muscle, but the, and their smooth ER um, is much more prevalent within a liver cell than other cells in your body because your liver's job is to detox. And that summarizes our first video on cell organelles. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you on the second video.